how exciting. I was setting up my camera and mom came to feed the baby. She's back again. It looks like a net with wire and tool and a bucket to catch baby hummingbirds. Okay, what is all this about? We'll watch here and you will find out. Hi, this is Robbie from Southern California. Don't want to disturb them. You and I have been watching this nest since April 1st. Gary knew the nest was built. He found it in his garden. The whole story I've told you, they built it on this rebar that was growing ubays, which is a type of yam. And the yams, the vines go up, and then in the winter, they completely die back. Well, the vines have been constantly falling, but some hummingbird, probably the one that built a nest in his bananas, he thinks, came along and decided to build a nest on it. So April 1st, I came down here to do a garden tour and I walked all through the garden. See, south thistle growing everywhere for the birds. And then of course his dragon fruit. Let's walk in here. We grow differently, probably saves our marriage. We actually do grow differently. Now he swore he was not gonna grow in totes. You remember that, but he is growing in totes because there's some things that just work out better in totes. I never saw them. I knew there was a nest somewhere, but I didn't know where it was. And you and I walked through here and walked right past them. Never saw them. And then Gary came down at the end after I walked through and did a little garden tour and connected it to mine. He came and showed us the babies and he was excited because they just hatched. Oh, oh my God. The babies in there, they've hatched already. Oh my gosh. On this thing? On this thing, yeah. That's an old ube or purple yam. I've never seen anything like this. There's two babies. But I found this a week or so ago and there was two eggs. So April 1st, these two babies hatched. We have gone through a whole lot of interesting weather since April 1st. And what happened was we had a heat wave. We had heavy winds. There was a lot of issues we were afraid if the babies would make it or not. So during the heat wave, Gary hung this shade cloth up. He never touched the nest, but he hung the shade cloth because the sun would have killed them. The sun was beating on him and they were panting and he was very worried that they would not be able to survive. Now you would say by nature, it would be fine, but we were having an unusual heat wave in the spring, we would not be 100 degrees. So he covered the sh up with the shade cloth, never touching that and everything was fine. April 6th, giving you a rundown on everything, we came down and we finished up a video on growing on a ladder, making a raised bed. I came over, I saw the babies, everything was fine, and I went back up to the computer. And I realized later on I wanted to do a clip and come down here and do one more clip down here. So I came down here with my camera and I peeked in. And that was April 6th, and now there was only one baby in there, and the nest was tilted completely sideways. So one baby was hanging on, and the other baby was somewhere in all this nasturtium and sweet potatoes. I literally carefully looked through the ground here, and then I pushed everything away on my hands and knees, could not find the baby. And then all of a sudden, he opened his mouth, and they're so brightly colored, even the same color as an orange nasturtium. I found him, I picked him up. And in the meantime, I pushed the nest back up because the other baby, the second one, was gonna fall out. The only thing I could find down here was some tool. Gary had kept some tool in a tote that he has covered that he keeps some tools and different things in. And he just so happens to have a little piece of green tool. So I propped up the nest more and I wound it around. Then I put the baby back in and I went up and I found Gary and I told him, I think you need to go down there and figure something out because as soon as the rest of the ubees, this vine falls, the nest is gonna go completely to the ground. Now in the meantime, when he came down, I put a black bucket underneath so in case he fell out, hopefully he'd get into the bucket instead of being into the nasturtiums. So Gary came down and he removed the tool and what he did was he put quarter inch wire. He folded it kind of like an L shape and he propped the nest back up, left the vines, because we don't want to disturb her too much. And after he left the vines, he put some wire there, and then he put the tool back. Now, the reason he put the tool back is I waited down here for 15 minutes, because I was hoping I was not going to have to hand feed hummingbirds. And sure enough, I stood on top, 
The mom came back when I first put the tool on and she fed the baby. So I knew all was good. They trust us. We feed thousands of hummingbirds in our kitchen window all year long. So she trusted us enough to know that what we did was good and her babies were there. Instinct is they want to take care of their babies. So after Gary wired it, all was good and they've been taking care of them. And that's it. The nest cannot possibly fall now. The only way to take that nest off is to take it down because it is now all wired onto that wire. It's wired onto the rebar and the tool is there just because it was there before. And on top of that, if anything tried to crawl up, let's say a mouse or a rat or something, they don't want to touch the tool because critters don't like the, the tool because their tiny nails get caught in it. So this way, that would deter that. And it worked. The reason I don't want to get too close is as you can see, they are totally feathered. They are now almost three weeks old. Today is April 20th. They will be probably out of that nest, if not today, tomorrow. And what they'll do is they'll perch around here and mom will continue to feed them. And in a few days, they'll be flying and she'll take them over to my hummingbird feeders in the window because it's just up there and all will be good. They're listening to me. They have their eyes wide open. They have all their feathers and they are ready to go. So I probably won't do any more updates on them except for letting you know that they have left the nest. But this is any minute. I mean, they could leave right now. I don't want them to because it's better if they stay right where they are until the time is right. Once they leave, they could stay together a little bit, like some of them have out my kitchen window, like the one that nested on my kitchen window for two years in a row. She had six nests, three and three, for two years in a row. And she would put the babies in the hibiscus plant, and then she would feed them. And after a few days, you know, it doesn't take long, they learn to fly and they're off on their own. So this is the update on them. They're doing fabulous. I, I don't know what else to say. This has been fun. I'm so glad I got to take you with me. And this is a very unusual nest. Usually they're a little higher, just a little bit more off the ground. But let me tell you something. A lot of times you're walking right by a nest and you don't even know it's there. The nest is only that big. It's smaller than the cup of your hand. And it's supposed to stretch as they get bigger and mom can push it and stretch it because it's made out of all kinds oh, they're watching me. Made out of all kinds of stuff, cobwebs and leaves and paper, whatever they can find. And they wind it around and stretch it. So that's the story on them. Both of them survive. Both of them are doing good. And let's hope she finds another place for the nest. But you know what? She may come back and do it one more time. After they leave, she might freshen it up and come back. And if she does, I will tell you either way later on. So with that, I hope you enjoyed our story on the hummingbirds. They're doing great, and I don't want to bother them because if I get too close, they will take off because they're in full flight, full feathers, no more fuzz. They are now little hummingbirds ready to join the world with all the other hummingbirds. With that, have a great day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.